Hi, today we're gonna to continue our discussion of digital sampling, converting analog signals into digital signals, this time focusing on resolution or bit depth. In my last video, we defined digital sampling as the process of converting an analog signal into digital by taking measurements of instantaneous amplitudes at equally spaced intervals. In that video, we went into sample rate in depth, sampling rate being the rate at which those measurements are taken. If we're looking at a waveform, which is a graph of amplitude over time, we're selecting a sampling rate to determine the fidelity of digital audio across that x-axis, across the axis of time. We talked about in an analog signal, there's an infinite resolution of time because we're just tracing continuous voltages. Similarly, in an analog signal, there's an infinite number of different amplitudes that could exist. But again, computers don't do well with an infinite range of continuous data. So we need to digitize this y-axis too. We need to digitize each of these samplings of amplitude that we're taking. Sampling rate is how often we're taking it, and bit depth or resolution is how many bits we're using to represent each of those sampled amplitudes. So, as an illustration, here's a digitally sampled waveform. Samples have been taken at equally spaced intervals at the sample rate, and we're using 16 bits to represent each sample, 16 ones and zeros. Here, we have 24 bits, 24 ones and zeros representing those different amplitudes. A quick and important disclaimer, bit depth and bit rate are not the same thing. I'm going to talk a little bit later about bit rate. But for now, keep in mind these are distinct but related properties, and we should be careful about our terminology. So again, resolution or bit depth is the number of discrete amplitudes a digital recording can represent, and resolution is expressed as the number of binary digits, the number of bits, to represent each value. Bits can either be a 0 or a 1. Since each bit only has two possible values, the number of different values a binary number can store is equal to 2 to the power of x, where x is the number of bits. 1 bit, 2 to the first power, 2, 0 or 1. 2 bits, 2 to the second power, 2 times 2 is 4. So we can do 0, 0, 0, 1, 1, 0, 1, 1. If you want to learn more about this binary counting, there are other resources in my introductory video about MIDI. I do some more of this binary counting, but let's leave it there for now. So this resolution, this number of bit, is going to be the number of amplitudes we can represent. The more bits, the more possible amplitudes, the more fidelity our digital representation will have, and the greater signal-to-noise ratio possible. With 8 bits, 2 to the 8th power, we can represent 256 different amplitudes. 16 bits, 2 to the 16th power, 65,536. 24 bits, 2 to the 24th power, 16,777,216, and so on. The reason we're counting up by 8 here is because 8 bits is a byte. A byte is a computer word and a common unit to work within computers. We can figure out the dynamic range of each of these resolutions, the signal-to-noise ratio, with the equation 6n plus 1.8 decibels, with n being the bit depth. So 16 bits, 6 times 16 is 96, plus 1.8, 97.8 decibels. The signal-to-noise ratio is comparing the level of the signal we want to the level of background noise. It's the ratio of the sound we're trying to record to the errors. In this case, the digital error is caused by the limited number of amplitudes we can represent in a digital system. Let's listen. This is a one-bit recording. Here's a two-bit recording. Here's a four-bit recording. Here's a 
Here's an 8-bit recording. Here's a 16-bit recording. and a 24-bit recording. Now this 8, 16, 24-bit I've been talking about are integer representations. Many audio programs are using 32-bit float for their resolution, and explaining 32-bit float is a little beyond the scope of this video, but it's just a different way to represent a number in binary. With 32-bit float, we can represent about 34 times 10 to the 38th power amplitudes for a dynamic range of about 1,680 decibels. Lots of audio programs are running 32-bit float internally, then we export the file to a different bit depth. For CD quality audio, we said that the sample rate was 44.1 kilohertz, and our resolution is 16 bits. Many times we'll record at a higher bit depth, 24 for example, with the knowledge that we're going to reduce that bit depth to 16 bits in the final product. Again, the number of analog amplitudes is infinite, so when we digitize the waveform, we can't use that exact amplitude, we use the closest possible amplitude to the original analog waveform. Quantization is the process of converting the continuous range of amplitudes, voltages, into a finite range of discrete values. No matter how high a resolution you use, there's always going to be some rounding but the rounding will be lower the higher the resolution. This is why our signal-to-error ratio gets higher the number of bits we use to represent amplitudes. More bits, more possible amplitudes, higher dynamic range. Because of this rounding, though, we're going to get a discrepancy between the quantized value and the original analog audio, and this is called quantization error. So what can we do about these errors? One thing we do is we intentionally introduce low-level noise into our recording in order to randomize that quantization error. This noise that we're introducing is called dither. While adding this noise, well, adds noise, it prevents those errors from forming patterns and taking on shapes that might introduce harmonic distortion. And so again, dither alleviates harmonic distortion, but it'll add hiss. Dither is a complicated and sometimes controversial topic in digital audio. For audio professionals, it's worth digging in to make sure you understand what's going on with it. But as a quick rule of thumb, you should use dither when you change from a high bit depth to a lower bit depth when you're exporting your final product. Let's come back to bit rate. Again, bit depth is another word for resolution, but bit rate has the word rate in it. So it's going to be the number of bits over time. You can also call this bandwidth. So if we're talking about the amount of data over time, we need to take our bit depth, the number of bits we're using to represent a sample, and then how many samples per second. So let's think about CD quality audio. We know the sample rate of CD quality audio is 44.1 kilohertz. And we know that the bit depth is the bits per sample, and so that's going to be 16 bits per sample. So we just need to multiply those together. 44.1 kilohertz times 16 bits equals 705.6 bits per second. That's not quite the bit rate of a CD, though, because we need to remember that CDs are stereo. They have a left channel and a right channel. So since we know that it has two channels, we need to multiply that 705.6 kbps by two. So CD quality audio has a bit rate of 1,411,200 bits per second, or 1,411.2 kbps, kilobits per second. 
we talked about higher sample rates last time, 96 kilohertz, and we talked about higher bit depths, 24 bits. 96 kilohertz times 24 bits, 2,304,000 times 2 for stereo, 4,608,000 bits per second. So the bit rate of this high quality audio would be 4,608 kbps. So knowing this bit rate, knowing this bandwidth, how do we figure out how big a file will be? How big is one minute of CD quality audio? Well, if we know that the bit rate is 1,411.2 kbps, s being seconds, we want to find out how many kilobytes a minute is going to be. A minute is 60 seconds. 1,411.2 times 60 is 84,672 kilobits. Remember, a byte is 8 bits, so we can divide that by 8 to get the number of kilobytes. And if we want to convert this to megabytes, we can then divide it by 1,000. To recap, though, in digital sampling, our sampling rate is determining our fidelity across the x-axis, time, and our resolution, or bit depth, is determining our fidelity across the y-axis, amplitude. If our sampling rate is too low, we can encounter problems with aliasing. We can solve this with an anti-aliasing filter, but we're going to lose and distort our high frequencies. When our bit depth is low, we can then encounter problems with quantization error, which we can solve with dither. It'll increase the random noise, but it'll reduce the possibility of harmonic distortion. Higher sampling rates and resolutions increase fidelity and can lead to higher quality recordings. Higher sampling rates and resolutions, though, will increase file size, which can decrease the portability and malleability of sounds. It's not always the right choice to use the highest numbers. Understanding what sampling rate and resolution are gives us the information to think critically and make the right decision based on the situation. <laughs>